That's a little noise. Don't step backwards on him. Okay? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, let's pray for Joshua, would you? Yeah. Lord, we do pray for Joshua right now. We just pray and agree together and ask him, will you just touch him right now? Put the words in his mouth. You'd have him uh, to speak to us. When we leave here tonight, whether it's short or long, doesn't matter. What matters is that your word was spoken, what you want done, what you want said, and that's exactly what happens. It's happened to be at peace and to speak your words in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. God bless you. God bless you, little Noah. Not being alive, church is Noah. <clears throat> if you turn your Bibles to Job 42, 16, and 17, I'll be reading there. Praise God. Now that was Job uh, 42. 16 and 17. Okay. Okay. You can sit down if you want to, young lady. Yeah, you can sit right here. Yeah. 16 and 17. Okay, I'm ready. I don't buy <laughs> Everybody ready? Yeah. 16 says, After this lived Job a hundred and forty years, and saw his sons and his sons' sons, even four generations. So Job died being old in full days. You're probably finding it strange that I read those two verses and intend to teach a message on them. The reason I say that is because if a person were to just open their Bibles and read those two verses as standalone or independent, there is not a lot of meaning to them. In fact, there are 42 chapters, 1,070 verses in the book of Job. I've just read verses 1,069 and 1,070. Those two verses are kind of like the dash or hyphen between the birth date and the death date on a tombstone. To the onlooker, it's just a numerical symbol. To the person who is lying beneath it, it is their testimony. There are two words in those passages of scripture that are kind of like that dash on the tombstone. They may not mean much to the onlooker, especially if they don't know the content of the one of the other 1,068 verses that come before them. The writer of the book, especially Moses, makes a statement in verse 16. After this lived Job a hundred and forty years. Verse 17, so Job died, being old and full of days. After this lived Job. I want to teach on a subject after this. Job facts. A, he was a perfect and upright man. He was a wealthy man. He had seven sons and three daughters. He feared God <coughs> and eschewed evil. He offered sacrifice just in case his sons had cursed God in their heart and did so continually. But the test, the trying of faith, was about to come. In just a few verses, you will find an exchange between the Lord and Satan. Suddenly, Job is the centerpiece of their conversation. Satan makes an accusation, claim that the only, only ready job serves Job. Only ready Job serves is because of the decrease in his substance. And if we look at 1 9, first, uh, go back to Job chapter 1. If you're there, say amen. 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 1 9 says, Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Do it, Job, fear God for naught. <coughs> it is then the Lord gave Satan power over all the substance of Job. And it wasn't long until Satan was hard at work trying to get Job to turn his back on the Lord. Right now in this place, Job is hard at work trying to get some of you to turn your back on the Lord. He wants you to put collapse and quit, but I'm here to proclaim to you this right now. You may just be in chapter 1 of what is going on, but chapter 42 is coming. The devil was attacking with vengeance. The savings took the oxen and the asses. 
Fire fell from the sky and burned up the sheep and the servants. The Chaldean stole the camels, and if there wasn't enough, a strong wind, tornado, has come and hit the house and killed all seven of your sons and all three of your daughters. I could see though that sadness and heartbreak and grief overwhelmed him. I can watch him as the tears stream down his face while he buried his children. But I can also see the devil laughing, standing back, going, watch this, Lord. He is about to cave in. The devil has put a lot of pressure on a lot of people, and many of them have caved in, but there has been a few that have stood their ground to the end for Amen. the Lord. Amen. If we go to uh, verse 20 of chapter 1. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. The devil wasn't counting on worship. He was counting on whining. He was counting on quitting. He was counting on Job being mad at God. As Philippians 4.13 is a very well-known verse, it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You want to throw the devil for a loop. Worship instead of wine. Praise instead of pout. We need to let the trying of our faith enable us instead of disable us. In verse 21 of chapter 1, it says, They said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise God. In verse 22, In all this Job sinned, nor changed God foolishly. I can see Job talking to his wife, saying, After this, it's over. I know God has had something in store for us. The devil, having not accomplished his task, present himself again before the Lord. And again, there is a conversation which Job becomes the centerpiece. And again, the Lord asked Satan if he considered his servant Job that there is none like him in all the land. But the devil responded in this terminology, You have got your hand on his life, but if you will not put your hand on him, he will curse thee to thy face. And that is from chapter 2nd second, second of Job in verse 5. So once again, the Lord permits Satan unleashed on Job without killing him. And now we find Job suffering with sore boils from head to toe and so much that he takes a piece of broken pottery and scrapes himself to relieve the itching and pain associated with the suffering. Yes. Here's Job sitting in ashes and now his wife is telling him he would be better off dead. His Job, but Job responds, how can we get good from God and not expect to receive evil? Job 2.10 but he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? And all this did not Job sin with his lips. Amen. I want us to understand that this is not every storm you have or perhaps are going through. It's a bad thing or evil or even a devil storm. Sometimes there are some God storms you have got to go through. Sometimes we want to escape God. God wants us to experience. Sometimes we want to do, to be delivered, but God wants us to discover. Sometimes we want out in chapter 1 or 2, but God knows what's in chapter 42. While we are, while you are going through this, all you can see what is in front of you. But after this, you're going to be a better person. You're going to be a stronger person. After this, you will know what it means to have beauty for ashes. And if you want to know more about bees for ashes, you can read Isaiah 61 and tell you more about it. You will have the oil of joy for more mourning. You will be wearing a garment of praise for the spirit of heaven, heaviness. And the people who wear the garment of praise are required to give praise to the garment maker. From chapter 3 through the rest of the book of Job is dealing with his friends who are continually trying to convince Job that his sin has finally caught up to him. So surely, Job was to blame for being in this shape. 
Friends, you don't have to be doing anything wrong to have trouble. In fact, just doing right can cause you trouble. In chapter 14, Job is beat down. He starts talking about dying. And if you want to turn to Job 14, 14, we'll read a little bit more. <laughs> it says, if man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change comes. In 15, it says, Thou shalt call, and I will answer thee. Thou wilt have a desire to the work of thy hands. Job is going through it. He's beat down. He's worn out. But he says, things are going to stay this way forever. Sooner or later, God is going to turn this thing around, and I will just wait until he does. And regardless of what he does, there is one thing I know. If you want to turn to Job 19, Job 19, and verse 25, 25, yes, verse 25, for I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Verse 26, and thou, and thou, after my skin of worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. 27, who I shall see for myself and my eyes shall behold, and not another through my reins be consumed within me. Job longs to find and feel the Lord. Job is just over halfway through this horrible ordeal of trying of his faith. He wants to find the Lord. He wants to feel the Lord. If we turn to Job 23, 3. It says, Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his seat. Yes, amen. Then we go down to verse 8. Behold, I go forward, but he is not there. Backward, but I cannot perceive him. To verse 10. But he knoweth the way that I take. When he has tried, I shall come forth as gold. Job said, even through, though I don't understand this, even though it seems that the Lord is a million miles away and completely out of sight, Complete out of sight, the one thing I do know is this. I was walking on the right path before all this started. The Lord knew it. So I will just keep walking the same path because I know where it goes. After this over, I am going to come forth as gold. My relationship with him is going to be worth more. My testimony is going to be worth more. My friendship is going to be worth more. After this is my title message. God moves again. We are 38 chapters into this and Job is down to nothing. He is still scraping himself with a piece of broken pottery. The battle has taken a toll on him, but he still hasn't blamed God for any of his troubles. Praise God. Job awakens one morning to live another miserable day. He steps outside on his porch and overlooks Ulf. I guess that's how you pronounce it. Use, use. Mm -hmm. Everything looks normal except for whirlwind out in the middle of nowhere. As Job watches, he gets closer and closer and closer to him, and suddenly stops in front of him. As Job watches, it's a second to see which way it's going to go. It starts talking and asking Job questions. And we'll read Job chapter 38. <coughs> chapter 38, 1. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is who is this that darkened counsel by words without knowledge? Burn up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee and answer thou thee. And for the next four chapters, the voice, the person, the words that Job had been longing for were coming to him out of a whirlwind. After the Lord finished speaking to Job, he spoke to the friends of Job and caused them to repent before Job. Yes, yes. And if you go to chapter 42, and verse 9, <laughs> and 
You want to read that name? And so Eliphaz the Tedemite, and Bildad the Shuhite, and Zophar the Naamite, went and did according as the Lord commanded them. The Lord also accepted Job. In verse 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Let's get down to verse 12. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than the beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 she-asses. And he had also seven sons and three daughters. After this lived Job 140 years. So yes. Job died, being old and full of days. There are some here tonight getting put to the test. You are being tried. You are troubled. And it seems like nothing is going right. While you're going through things may not go right like you need them to go. But it's after this you will see the hand of the Lord. Sometimes it's after this the Lord moves in great ways in our lives. Now I want to go to verse, uh, go to Joshua one nine. Y'all want to turn there? Joshua 1 9 says, Have not have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, with whatsoever thou goest. And Isaiah 4 41 10, if you want to write this down, says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee, be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yeah, I will help thee, I will upload thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Deuteronomy 31 6 Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he he it is that doeth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. And Zechariah 3 17 The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. Matthew 28, 28, 20 says, Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Hebrews 13, 5 says, Let your conversation be without covenants and be content with such things as ye have. For ye have said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Yes. Romans chapter 8, 38 through 39. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And I just want to say before I close that, you know, you may be going through some things, but God is on the way. When God gave me this message, I didn't know what... To think that is, all of us go through some things. We go through our things daily in our lives. We go through things weekly, monthly, and me and Cash are going through it. But we keep trusting the Lord. The main thing is trust the Lord and He will come. He will take care of things in your life. And I think that's all I have. Praise God. <laughs> he told me to be short. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get too short when you come, because they'll be saying, we need even more. <laughs> Here you go. Is this yours? No, it's not mine. Praise God. Well, the wonderful thing about Job was, he stayed true to the Lord no matter what comes his way. And he went through a lot more than a lot of us go through. Uh, most of us have never gone through the loss of a lot of members at one time, but all your children at once, all your material assistance, all your cattle, and you use your uh, uh, donkeys and uh, oxen and all that. But, uh, but Job, uh, and the thing that was 
wonderful, a, a different about Job for, from us. We have the Word of God. He didn't have the Word of God written. He only had the spoken Word of God. But God literally spoke to him all the way, you know. And so, which is good to have, but uh, isn't it wonderful to have that Bible that you have to be able to read and, and get the promises of God out of it. And so, I thank you for sharing it with us, Joshua. And, and uh, uh, something we can take home with us to think about Job and what he went through and how we're hardly going to do anything compared to him, what he went through and he stayed through. And that's what God wants us to do. Stay true. Praise God. Anybody have something you want to say before we pray and dismiss tonight? Praise God. If you don't take too long, we'll be out of here before 8 30. It was awesome because it went with Ashley's message so many people. Did it? It sounds like, yeah, God's just pouring in here. Let us know he's going to take care of it. To trust him. Mm -hmm. That's what her message was about. That's Thank good. Having faith. Every time the enemy comes against you, God has an answer. So, what an example. Thank you, Josh. That was good. Yeah. Praise God. So, as long as the message makes you think about your life, uh, you know, and what, what you're not only going through, but how are you reacting to what you're going through? And uh, all the Word of God always encourages us to, just to stand strong, like you read out of Joshua, and uh, be strong and stand. And, and, uh, and just see the salvation of God. He said, be still and know that I'm Lord. And he is. And so she said, if you'll stand strong and be true, stay true to all, he will work things out. He just has to trust him. We might not be able to take care of the world coming up to help it to us. <laughs> well, the thing that out of all that he said when he read that was that Job stayed on the porch. And stood there and watched it come right up to him. And most of us have been taken off somewhere. <laughs> if we had a basement, we'd been in that basement. But, so we might have missed God too, you know. But uh, anyway, uh, Job uh, had been through so much. I think he had been tried to the place that he was totally given over to trusting God, no matter what come, even did come. So, uh, but the, out of the tornado, God spoke to him. So uh, all bad things that happen or appear bad may not be necessarily bad. You know, could be God making good come out of bad. Praise God. He does that. He does it. Praise God. I like what you said about some trials are from God to strengthen your faith. And, you know, well, yeah. Uh, there's three places they come from, Satan, ourselves, and God. The ones that come from God, you always have to remember, are never meant to destroy you. They're never meant to bring you down to get you away from him. They're meant to do the opposite. They're meant to strengthen you and help you. And uh, Job had been through so much that by the time this thing he talked about, tornadoes, God speaking out of it, he was prepared. He was ready. To receive whatever God wanted, you know. So uh, you have to know the word to know which things that come are from God and which are not. Sickness is not from God. There's no place in the word of God that we all before God before Jesus told anybody says, I can't hear you because this is from God. You can be you meant to be sick. That was not something in there. But trials like Job Job went through. The loss of things. Uh, uh, so if things come just know that God's not going to let it be too strong for you I believe that praise God anybody else I have something they want to say praise God we don't have you know Satan can't go and accuse us like he did mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. You don't have access to God anymore. Yeah. You can't do that. You're exactly right. I'm glad you said that. He's not able to go before God anymore. He confuses us before the Lord. Mm -hmm. He accuses us. You fail God, watch how quick he comes and jumps on your case. All of us here fail the Lord. And how quick as the time since he come and really let you have it. Because you fail the Lord. He will accuse us like he said, but he has no right to go to God anymore and accuse us. And there's a scripture for that. The Lord showed that to me in the scripture. So there's a scripture that says he can't do that anymore. So 
Uh, you don't ever go to God and say, look at your son, your son or your daughter. They're really a, nothing but a failure. You know, and try to accuse you like you did Joe. But he'll sure come to us. And they, they'll knows that. Praise God. So you have to remember if you can still go to God, you can still bring a Job experience on us. If you can't go to God, you can't bring a Job experience on us. So all these people out here in the world as Christians that say, I'm going through a Job experience, I don't know what they're talking about. First of all, God said Job was a righteous man. He was righteous. Most of the people out in the world who's going through trials are not righteous. And uh, that's just one of the things. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Joseph, for bringing that up. Praise God. Anybody else have something they want to say before we pray? Yeah, thank the Lord. Thank God she said Joshua got to come. Thank you. <laughs> Praise God. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer and dismiss. Lord, we are thankful tonight for your word. We're thankful tonight for the message that tells us that even Job went through all of what he did. We're thankful that, as he said, the last verse says, after this, there was an afterwards. There was a time that came after all that Job went through. So, Lord, we thank you for that. It means he made it through. You see me through. You help me through. So now we pray that as we leave here tonight, that you will watch over us and protect us and keep us safe and bring us back together and say, uh, this coming Sunday, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you as you leave tonight. Praise the Lord. I was trying to read the songs and everything. I didn't have glasses. Three glasses only. Uh, I got it. I got two there, Joseph. Praise God. Josh, we have an actual daycare. Yeah. <laughs> we have an actual daycare. I tell you, I think for little kids, they do pretty good. Don't they? They're not like some daycares where there's so much noise going on, you can't hear what's the person next to you. I love having them here. I do too. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. See, you later. See you Sunday, Lord willing. He's got to come Sunday if you can. Lord willing. Yeah. Jimmy, God bless you, buddy. God bless you. Have a good week. You do the same. And Lord willing, we'll see you Sunday. Praise God. At least I got the whole little, little Noah and, 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 and little Katie come over and sit beside of me. And he tried to come over. And I'm like, he would have had longer if I would have been able to play with him a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's so funny to watch him do that. Isn't it? Oh, I hate you. Oh, I hate you. She is a person. Yes, she is. 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 She